Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. This series, we're taking a look at GarageBand running on the iPad. In this episode, we're going to talk about putting together your first project. Now, of course, it's fun to play instruments separately on GarageBand for the iPad, but it's even better when you actually can make them play together. And that's what we can do by recording multiple instruments at the same time on GarageBand. GarageBand is capable of recording up to eight different instrument tracks, and that can include smart instruments, guitar input, microphone input, and loops. We'll talk more about loops in an upcoming episode as well. Now, when you're in any of the instruments inside GarageBand, getting started recording Recording your project is easy, you just press the record button at the top. You'll start to hear the metronome that you've chosen, and then you'll hear a one bar lead in, so that you know what the time is, and where you start entering in and start recording. Start playing along with the metronome, and it'll continue to record until it reaches the end of the section you've predefined. After it hits the end of that section, the record will turn off, and it'll start playing back what you've already played. Now, if you don't like what you did, you can just press stop, hit the back button to get back to the beginning of the track, and then press record button again, and then it'll start again with the lead in and allow you to start playing again and re-record over what you did. Now once you're satisfied with what you've recorded, you can move on to the next instrument simply by clicking the instruments button at the top and selecting your next instrument. In the play controls up top, don't forget to click back to get to the beginning of the section, and then press record to start recording your new instrument into the timeline. Again, if you're not happy with what you did, press stop, back, and then record again, and then you can re-record that section. Now if you want, you can do this up to eight times to have eight different instruments playing on this track. Now unfortunately, in the mode that we have it here in instruments, we don't have a very good overview of what's going on here. But you do have the ability to flip it back into the mode that you may be familiar with from GarageBand. Now after you recorded something, a new button will appear at the top of the screen. And that gives you the ability to choose between the instrument view and the timeline view. Click on the button that looks like a series of lines all grouped together, and it'll flip up and show you the timeline. You'll see all the tracks of the instruments you've recorded up until this point, and over to the left you'll see a little icon indicating the type of instrument that track is made up of. And expand this section a bit by grabbing the divider line and pulling over to the right. Then it'll show you more information including the full name of the instrument, individual track volume, and it'll give you buttons for soloing or muting individual tracks during playback. You can slide the divider back over to the left to hide that information again. Now the real power when you're in timeline mode is the ability to edit and adjust what you've done here. Now to adjust something in the timeline, just simply tap on that item in the timeline and it'll highlight darker green. You can then move it back and forth with your finger if it doesn't fill the whole timeline already. You can tap it again to bring up some other editing options including cut, copy, delete, and paste if you've already cut or copied something. You can also hit loop which will loop that item until the end of the section, or you can hit split if you want to actually split the section that you recorded into smaller chunks. Up at the top of the screen you'll actually see a playhead which will indicate where you are in the project. You can move this back and forth with your finger to the place where you want to be. If you want to split an item into several sections, you'll adjust that playhead to the beginning point, and then you'll tap it and then hit split. You'll see an icon with a pair of scissors on it. Just drag that down from the top of the item to the bottom, and that'll split it in that section. Then go to another position on the timeline, then hit split again, and then you can take that section out if you want. Using the split functionality like this, you can actually split things into smaller sections and make them into modules so you can drag them around to other parts of the project, rearrange them, that sort of thing. At any point during this process, if you realize something has gone wrong, you can actually start hitting the undo button at the top to start reversing what you've just done in terms of editing. Now, if you haven't used all eight tracks already, you can add a new track to your project by going down to the bottom left and tapping on the big plus sign. It'll take you to the list of instruments, and it'll ask you to select one. Then when you select that instrument, it'll automatically take you into instrument view, and then you can start playing and recording using that instrument. Then when you're done, you can flip back into the timeline mode again. Now you can switch back and forth between instrument view and project view at any point by hitting those two icons. Now it's worth remembering here that you're recording in sections by default when you first start a project. Now you can go to the puzzle piece at the top and switch to a different section when you're ready to start recording into a new section, or you can select all sections if you just want to record throughout the entire thing that you have going on. Now the one big downside with GarageBand on the iPad is unlike on the Macintosh, you can't actually individually edit notes. So if you've recorded a section and it's particularly good, except for one bum note, you can't go back and just fix that one note. You actually have to record the whole section again, unfortunately. That might change in upcoming uh, versions of this. At this point though, it is a bit of a disappointment. The one nice thing though is it does give you the ability to record loops on this and you can use those in timeline mode. We'll show you how to do that in an upcoming episode of this series. Check out other episodes of the series as well to see how to use the instruments and uh, record them into the timeline here. And check out the show notes for this and the other parts of the series at butterscotch.com.